Mr. Chairman, President of the National Party, uh, Councillor Trainer, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is uh, with great pride that I address you today at our at our Ardesh, uh, which marks uh, more than a year since our foundation. The National Party is not the only Irish political party to have its Ardesh this weekend, as the Marxist Provo Sinn Féin Ardesh is also being held today. The Provo Marxists have hijacked the noble name of a genuinely nationalist party that was Sinn Féin, uh, which was the political vehicle for the Irish independence struggle. Sinn Féin was uh, founded by a real patriot, namely Arthur Griffith, who, by the way, was an Irish monarchist nationalist and who was president of Dáil Éireann and part of the Irish team led by General Michael Collins that negotiated the Anglo-Irish Treaty on December 6, 1921 that provided uh, freedom to achieve freedom. The programme of Sinn Féin Marxists, if fully enacted, would destroy the Irish nation that our patriot dead laid down their lives for more thoroughly than Oliver Cromwell did during his most vicious bloodlust who looted, robbed and murdered our people in the 1650s. And Cromwell was an English Republican dictator. The Provo Marxist catch cry is the Republic of Equals, which is a code word for tyrannical communist suppression of the accidental individual inequality of human conditions and the expropriation of private property ownership that is a natural right of man, and their equality agenda would further debase Irish nationhood by extending even more uh, paper Irish citizenship to foreign nationals that would open the floodgates to uh, even more mass immigration that would create the real prospect of Irish people becoming a minority in their own country. As my friend Councillor Trainer says about the Provos in summing up their noxious ideology, as Brits out and everyone else in. <laughs> and the Sinn Féin Marxist equality agenda advocates the mass murder of Irish unborn children by abortion on demand and the legalisation of an affirmative promotion of the degeneracy of homosexualism and trans transgenderism. Provo Marxists are not alone in pursuing this noxious Marxist equality agenda uh, that is being pushed by the various uh, uh, Trotskyist Marxist factions that are represented in the Dáil, such as the Socialist uh, so-called Solidarity Party and the People Without Profit Red Faction that is a front for the Socialist Wasters Party and Independence <laughs> for Change Group. And if these various red factions promote the principle of the Republic of Equals, the catch cry of the leading party of government, namely Fine Gael, under their new gay transnational leader and Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, is the so-called Republic of Opportunity, which is a code word for a Republic of Opportunity for corporate cronyism, banksters, foreign vulture fund parasites and international finance capitalism. Fine Gael and government since 2011 must share the credit for the creation of the Republic of Opportunity for corporate cronyism, banksters and foreign vulture parasites and international finance capitalism with our partners in government, the Pinko Socialist Labour Party uh, and with Fianna Fáil that wrecked the economy. The legacy of this Republic of Opportunity is the treasonous bank bailout that forced Irish taxpayers to compensate gambling bondholders in bust Irish banks, uh, most notably the now defunct uh, Anglo-Irish Bank, that added 64 billion uh, euro to the national debt uh, and forcing taxpayers to take on 42% of EU bank debt, which was paid for by austerity. But Fine Gael, that advocates the so-called Republic of Opportunity for corporate cronyism, 
also embraces the social policy dimension of the Marxist equality agenda by their support for abortion and demand and the LGBTQRST rights degeneracy agenda. I believe that we as Irish nationalists should take the opportunity of being gathered uh, at the August occasion of the National Party Ardesh to rediscover the meaning of Irish nationalism which has nothing to do with either Radker's Republic of Opportunity or the Bolshevist Republic of Equals of Provo Sinn Féin Marxists. Authentic Irish nationalism didn't begin in 1937 with de Valera's constitution, which is a green blend of French re third uh, uh, republicanism with a f within a framework of British parliamentary supremacy with uh, superficial recognition to our native Irish language and culture and national self-determination. <laughs> Nor did Irish nationalism begin with the establishment of the Irish Free State in 1922, nor even with the formation of the First Dáil in January the 21st, 1919. And Irish nationalism uh, that was taken up by those who gave their, their lives in the 1916 Easter Rising, even predates uh, the declaration of the Irish Republic back then. And most certainly authentic Irish nationalism did not begin in 1798 with the United Irishmen Rebellion that was influenced by the triumph of the criminal usurpation that was the French Revolution of 1789, which was not a rebellion against tyranny, but rather a socialist assault on against authority in all forms and tradition. The great similarities in both philosophy and action which it represented as a test run for the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917 are rarely noted. The colonisation of Irish Republican thought by French revolutionary ideas has had the result of skewing false Irish nationalism to the left. The strategic importance of Ireland drew the attention of the French Revolutionary Republicans who conceived the, the notion of using Ireland as a springboard of their efforts to undermine Britain, their most implacable and successful opponent in their continental endeavours. From the opening of the revolutionary period onwards and even through Nap the Napoleonic times, Ireland played a great role in the thinking of the French. Irish revolutionaries spent much of their time thinking about how French interests might run parallel towers in ousting the British from this country, all of which might have been relatively harmless had the Irish taken a detached attitude of simply using the convergence of interests and, not, and had not instead become greatly imbued with French revolutionary ideas. And in the Ireland of 2017, those spurious French revolutionary ideas of liberty, equality and fraternity that has now evolved into diversity are the guiding principles of the political cartel that runs this state. The French Revolutionary Le Chapelier Law enacted by the French National Assembly in June 1791 will put William Martin Murphy of Dublin lockout fame to shame. Because this law banned workingsmen's guilds, that were the forerunner of to trade unions in France, and banned the possibility of wage uh, bargaining and, and strikes, and laid the foundation for the French Republic of Opportunity for crony capitalism. <laughs> Many students of history have forgotten Irish nationalist heroes such as Patrick Sarsfield, who led the Irish army in the then Jacobite cause against the forces of the usurping William of Orange, or Sir Richard Talbot, who effectively uh, led a nationalist government of Ireland between 1689 and 91 as Lord Lieutenant, or His Royal Highness Prince Owen Roe O'Neill, who crushed the English at the Battle of Burb in 1642, and who nobly and brilliantly uh, led the Confederate army that rose uh, that arose from the rebellion of 1641 that was ultimately defeated by Cromwell's roundhead army of invasion and occupation. <laughs> the spirit, and it should be noted that the spiritual descendants 
of Prince Owen Roe O'Neill and the Francophile Irish revolutionary Wolf Tone, who with Dev are the joint patron saints of Fianna Fáil, fought each other on, on Spanish soil between 1936 and 39 during the Spanish Civil War between nationalists and the forces of communism and anarchism. Irish nationalism, on the other hand, spans five millennia, or 5,000 years, since the Firbolgs first settled in this country and divided uh, the country into five provinces. But it was the Celtic settlement some 2,700 years ago that established a unique form of government and jurisprudence for the Irish people, with a federal national monarchy and the Brehan Laws. The Gaelic form of government was very different to the English form and very different to the form of government that we have today in this country. Based on the system of Tanistry, the purpose of which was to create a meritocratic system of succession of clan chieftains, the Irish had created for themselves what could best be described as a republican monarch monarchical form of government or a system of elective monarchies in a country that was a patchwork of minor kingdoms. And because of the Brehan Laws that established an effective constitution of rights for members of the Irish nation, the political power of Irish kings was limited and greatly circumscribed. The Irish nation was subdivided by the various Irish clans that were ruled or led by Tishig or chieftains, all of whom were kings or re with, with uh, lesser kings known as Rina Tuhia, effectively charged with the administration of local government and over them, over kings uh, that, that were uh, administered local government at what would be considered county, county level. And the high king's role was to lead national government with, with uh, the, the, the Rina Tuihia, kings of provinces, responsible for running the affairs of the provinces. The Irish nation was knitted together by the clans. Porrick Pierce uh, 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 endorsed, uh, understood this well and endorsed this concept when he said the nation is a natural division, as natural as the family and as I inevitable uh, and, and knits together by, by natural ties, ties mythical and spiritual, the nation is the family in large. Whereas the English monarchical form of government, which we associated with the crown, was about the supremacy of the crown and the privatisation of governmental authority into the hands of a privileged family preserved by the uh, primogenitor system of succession. The English uh, system of government gave way to parliamentary dictatorship after, uh, with the restoration of the English monarchy in 1660 after the dictatorship of Cromwell to the point where today the so-called United Kingdom is a crowned republic. I think it, it's only fitting, given where, uh, where uh, we're having the Ardèche, that we mention a great hero of Irish nationalism, namely uh, his Hibernic Imperial Majesty, Brian Boru, who was known as Emperor of the Irish and High King of Ireland, and who, like... Porrick Pierce, 900 years later, uh, led the uh, Irish army to defeat the Danes at the Battle of Clandarf on Good Friday 2014 and was cruelly slain afterwards. Like Pierce, 900 years later, who paid the ultimate price with his life for leading the Easter Rising, that was the catalyst th that led to the country achieving its statehood. Uh, that was achieved uh, by the skill and talent of General Michael Collins, who negotiated the, the freedom to achieve freedom in the 1921 treaty. Uh, Brian Boru, Pierce, and Collins uh, carried responsibility that goes with authority, and they and there were men who led from the front, which is in great contrast with the political class that runs this country. We can't, we can't imagine uh, Enda Kenny or Bertie Ahern taking over the GPO and ris risking all. 
for the sake of their country. And I'm sure, to be fair to them, they uh, were uh, very embarrassed at last year's um, commemoration of the 1916 Rising, in which they must see as being uh, an act of utter folly and madness since their primary interest in political involvement was to advance themselves up the greasy pole of political advancement for a salary and a pension, and maybe in the case of Andy Kenny, the presidency of the EU, unele the, the unelected role of presidency of the EU Council to succeed <laughs> Donald Tusk. Which brings us to the, back to what, the, the reason why the National Party was founded. The National Party was founded to resurrect the national idea and to, and to ultimately bring about the triumph of the national idea and the redis by the rediscovery of an understanding of the, of the national idea among the Irish population. The, any time in Irish history that Irish leaders be it the uh, 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 treacherous Jeremy uh, McMurray, King of Ferns, who went to the, to, to the court of King Henry II and invited him to take over Ireland, or uh, the, the Gaelic nobles who agreed to surrender and regrant offered by Henry VIII in 1539. Any time that, that, that these people, our past leaders of, this, of the Irish nation, had lost sight of the national idea, disaster followed, division followed, and we had 800 years of foreign occupation and oppression as a result. <laughs> but my friends, the uh, principle of surrender and regrant that Henry VIII offered to the Gaelic nobles in 1539 was alive and well in 1922, when after the assassination of General Collins and the coup d'etat by the Free State Government, we had a situation where the, 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 the Free State Government between 1922 onwards uh, abandoned the national idea, abandoned uh, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, freedom to achieve freedom within the Anglo-Irish Treaty by means of using the Boundary Commission Clause to achieve Irish unity. Abandoned Northern Nationalists uh, to uh, uh, over half a century of oppression and gener gerrymandering uh, in, 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 where, they were, where they who are part of a majority on this, uh, in this country, in this island, became uh, an, a minority in an artificial entity that was propped up uh, by British occupation. And in, 1990, and in 1992, uh, the, the, Irish, the Irish government, then Fianna Fáil government, also uh, embraced surrender and regrant when they signed up to the Maastricht Treaty and ditched our national currency, the punt, with, with, with the disastrous con consequences of joining uh, the, the, the euro single currency. And in, indeed, surrender and regrant was the policy adopted by successive Irish governments since the, our excessive accession negotiations to join the EEC in 1972 when we gave up our fisheries. And, and since then, it, when we signed up to the Nice, Lisbon and Fiscal Compact treaties that have su such a, a devastating impact on the economy of this country and its, and its economic freedom. The national idea, what is the national idea? National idea is about building a house for Irish people to dwell in and not a dwelling place for other people from the rest of the world. <laughs> and this house for Irish people to dwell in is all 32 counties of this great country. <laughs> the, 
by once again making this country great, by making it a national homeland for the Irish people. Irish nationalism uh, is not rights-based, a rights-based victimhood nationalism, but a proud nationalism that is about nurturing and protecting the most valuable asset of, of the Irish people, which is their unique national heritage and cultural identity. Our first president, who wasn't Douglas Hyde, Padraig Pearce himself, said that England was, was right, and this is his, Pearce's words, to rule over the Irish people, so long as the Irish were willing to allow them to do so. <laughs> Pearce gave his life not merely for the cause of your freedom and mine, but for the aspiration of Gaelic freedom uh, that, that, was, that puts the good of the nation and the preservation of the richness of Irish culture and the prosperity of, of its people above all else. Irish nationalism has accommodated both monarchical and republican form of government because its guiding principle of limited government puts the citizen or individual member of the nation at the centre and had been the purpose of all policy making and, poli and political decision taking. Under the Gaelic system, the individual member of the Irish nation, the citizen, is at the centre. The citizen is surrounded by his or her family, and the family is surrounded by uh, the uh, local community, which, is the, which are the social building blocks underpinning the foundation of the nation. That's what nationalism is about. And the form of government and th that, we, that the Gales had chosen for themselves, they had practically invented the principle of subsidiarity in its political dimension because they believed uh, through the Rena Tuya system in, gov in go the government that is best is the government that is local, government that is nearest to the people and to their families and to their communities. And, th and then the, uh, the Gaelic system also uh, incorporated the Brehan laws, which, was, which truly respected private property rights. Unlike, uh, for example, in Mr. de Valera's constitution in Article 10, all mineral rights are, are, is, are owned by the state. Under Brehan laws, that, that wouldn't be possible because the, under the Brehan law, the, there was the, the primary re respect for prime and pro private property rights was, uh, in, it was instilled in, in, in the political system and was, was, was because they believed in personal integrity, they believed in personal rights, and they believed in the rights of the nation, and that, and that you wouldn't have an, a, a truly free Irish nation if the people who live within its borders are not free. Because Gaelic freedom, uh, and the Gaelic freedom that, that, that Pori Pierce talked about, and Ireland not merely free, but Gaelic as well, not merely Gaelic, but free as well, was Gaelic freedom was about uh, maximising the, 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 the freedom of the people who live uh, uh, within the the, this great country. And in such a Gaelic Ireland, uh, th there, would not, th there would not be a mass immigration. In uh, such a Gaelic Ireland, uh, th this country wouldn't become uh, a dumping ground for foreign criminals or a breeding ground for Islamist terror cells. In such a Gaelic Ireland would, would not tolerate uh, 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 um, destruction of life during pregnancy act or a gay marriage or a citizens assembly or the prospect of repealing the eighth amendment no <laughs> no the, the 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 gaelic ireland is about putting irish people first and this is what the national party is about the national party is about advancing this national idea and I have no doubt that if we continue 
uh, to, to, to maintain the, uh, the progress that we've made since our establishment over, just over a year ago. Ultimately, people in this room will see the triumph of the national idea with a national party government. Thank you very much.